Except the Lord keep the city, they waketh in vain, they that watch over it. I want to always remember that no matter how incredible the ministry, or the mission, or the business being interviewed, it's all in vain if not for Him. Thanks for joining us for another Faith Horizons podcast. The purpose of a Faith Horizons podcast is to discover the kingdom of God in Kansas City, one conversation at a time. Welcome to another Faith Horizons podcast. Today I have with me Annika Bergen again, uh, but today she's going to actually be, uh, we're going to play a reverse role and uh, Annika is actually going to be interviewing me. So I uh, turn the mic over to you. All right. Thanks, Nathan. So uh, I'm Annika Bergen. I have been writing articles for Faith Horizons. And as I've been listening to the podcast in order to write blog articles from them, I've just noticed that, Nathan, you've made a lot of really wise comments just on the side as you interview people. And so it's been enough wise comments that I've thought, I really want to hear his story. And so I'm guessing that other listeners are in the same boat that we would love to hear your story and um, how God's led you to Faith Horizons and how he's worked in your life. So I just thought it would be fun to switch the roles behind the mics and um, let you share yeah, your thank story. Thank you so much. It's so nice to have somebody to uh, ask the questions rather than me just saying, this is about me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's always, you know, about the Lord and what he's doing. Yeah. So I thought, first of all, we could just start off with you telling a little bit just about yourself, who you are. Faith Horizons is not your full-time job, although I'm sure it takes a lot of time for you to do. So what is the rest of what you do? So um, thirty, I'm 38 years old. I've been in Kansas City my whole life. I'm married to my wife, uh, Maritza. Uh, Maritza, we live in South Kansas City. I've got two kids. Anna is 10 years old, and David is eight. Anna likes ballet, and my son David loves uh, Thomas trains. He has about I don't know three to four hundred Thomas trains. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> not all the big ones, some of the mini ones. But anyway, but Maritza, uh, my wife, also grew up here in Kansas City too. Her parents lived out uh, in Martin City, which is a hundred like one hundred thirty fifth in Warnall, and they've lived out there pretty much her whole life. So um, just a little bit more about me on the backstory. Um, so I'm the oldest of six kids. I've lived in Kansas City area my entire life. Um, I, re I remember when I was a kid, I used to, you know, be digging holes in the backyard. I had one time, I, w I had like a four by a five foot deep, like six foot by six foot hole I had dug in the backyard. <laughs> but your mom loved that. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we had five acres though, so it wasn't that big of a deal, you know. Gotcha. The sun's out there digging to China. Anyway, um, I liked following ants around. I used to have magnifying glasses and I'd follow ants and they had like these little trowels on the ground. Anyway, so I was just... And I was just interested in stuff. We were homeschooled, so I had to find something to bide my time. So there I am in the backyard, you know. Uh, I started a lawn mowing company when I was about 10 years old. And uh, I mowed the the neighbor across from me, the neighbor beside me, and then the neighbor ne uh, the other neighbor across from me. I, so I had my own, like, little lawn mowing service. I would just literally go out of my, my you know, my yard, da -da 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 -da, you know, come right back. And it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Some would say, you know, about me and about following the Lord, some would say that that I knew that I knew God before I was born, although I know that's not possible. <laughs> I know that I started following Jesus around the age of maybe like three or four. And even at a young age, I would tell people about Jesus. And I remember that at one time I was speaking with a person in a library. Like we are actually, I remember this too. I vaguely remember it still. And, um, I was talking to this guy and this guy was talking about how he was about ready to commit suicide. And I was like, and I was, and I was talking to this guy. I'm like, man, don't commit suicide. God still loves you. You know, you, wow. you have a life ahead of you. I was 10 probably. Wow. And, I, and, and I remember this guy was a lot older than me. And, and there was some other stuff in that conversation where he said, he might've said, you know, I killed my parents. So I'm going to commit suicide. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Wow. <laughs> don't kill yourself, man. That's not the solution. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I don't know what all happened there anyway. Um, when I was about 18 years old, I went off to Bible College at Victory Bible Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was down there for two years. I was a part of a group called IMT, which is in ministry training. So like there was the Bible College, and then there's an, an, an additional group that was beside it. There was like a full-time ministry thing. So we were doing like outreaches, 
performing arts. We did, I don't know if you've ever heard like the, there's, there's, there's different types of, uh, performing arts groups. Like I was a part of a group called, anyway, there's different types of performing arts messages that are really keyed in on sharing the gospel with people. So anyway, I was, I was Satan in one of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was Satan. So I had like a chain and I had people attached to the chain and I was dragging them around. And, wow. and, and we went down to Mexico and we went to a lot of cities in the United States and told people about Jesus. Anyway, that's my Bible college story, but really had a really great experience down there. When I came back to Kansas City when I was about 20 years old and um, I never went into vocational ministry. And that's kind of, you know, it's interesting because... I wanted, I mean, I didn't, I just never felt called to it. So I actually went, came home from Bible college. I had a practical ministry degree and then I went into the marketplace. And so I ended up working at Einstein Brothers, Russell Stover's, you know, Cabela's. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was actually a car salesman for a while. I sold cars for about a year. And and through all that, you know, I, I actually learned that I actually really liked managing. You know, I really liked managing people. I liked leading others. I really found a knack for leading others and managing others. And so in about 2000, um, 2009, um, I met up with a group called um, – a cleaning company called Nissan Services. And I actually – one of the, the managers there met me. We, we kind of created a relationship. And so he invited me on. And I joined up with Nissan Services in 2009, and I've been managing with Nissan Services for 13 years now. Awesome. So that's what I've been doing for the past 13 years is uh-huh. been managing uh, with a cleaning company called Nissan Services. We clean a lot of the churches in Kansas City. Like I clean some of the larger cleaning uh, churches. And so I've been able to be a part of that. And we hire people. I train people and just mm-hmm. kind of help develop others. I like developing people. So... So from where you're at with managing and being in the marketplace, then what inspired you to start the Faith Horizons podcast? So, so this is really a kind of a funny story. So like if you had asked me five years ago if I was going to be doing a podcast, I, I had looked at you like you're, <laughs> what? Uh-huh. You know, and um, I mean, I'm I'm somewhat techie. I like websites. I like understanding websites anyway, but I'm not like... I, I had never done like audio production at all before. I mean, audio production is a whole nother, you know, thing. So what I'm inclined to do is help others do things. I like helping others do things. And so I was helping a guy start a podcast for about two years and we kept talking about it and talking about it. And I kept, you know, drawing up the plans in my mind and then bringing him ideas and suggestions and all this. Well, it didn't happen. And then another person, and so that podcast, that whole entire planning in my mind never happened. And then another person, you know, suggested to me that maybe he, maybe we could start a podcast together, but he, but he was going to do it. So every time that it was starting the podcast, it was never me hosting. Mm-hmm. You're just helping other people. I was just started. helping other people. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're getting it. You're getting it. Anyway. Yeah. So I was just helping other people. And so then after the next one fell through, we, I had been thinking about helping another person starting a podcast for about two and a half years. And I just was like, you know what? I'll just do this myself. Yeah. <laughs> so I started a, a a podcast. That was what really kind of got me started was I was trying to help somebody else do something that God was actually calling me to. Hmm. You know, and, and it's like, I was like, I'm going to just have him help everybody until he figures it out. And then he'll just do it himself. Just do it. So then what was the vision for specifically Faith Horizons? Like, what did you hope to accomplish with it? So... When I first started Faith Horizons, the goal was to interview kingdom businesses like Christian businesses, kingdom businesses in Kansas City, and just to kind of figure out how they were serving their neighborhoods, their people, and then their customers. That was the initial approach because I just wanted to learn about all the different techniques and like kind of what they were encountering, the obstacles, and then some of the kingdom solutions that they were actually bringing for neighborhoods, their people, and their their customers. There's a lot of data there if you think about that, you know, so that's very data rich. But after starting it, after starting it, probably uh, within the first three months, three months of starting it, I ended up broadening the scope to include all the unique expressions. So, like I call them, like unique expressions of the kingdom. So, like a ministry is a unique expression of the kingdom. A business is a unique expression of the kingdom. You know, they, they're all different, unique expressions to include all the unique expressions of the kingdom. And so then we came up with the tag phrase: uh, "Discovering the Kingdom of God in Kansas City." 
one conversation at a time. And that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. Um, when I first started the podcast, I had a friend with me. <laughs> I kind of took him along <laughs> for the ride. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you just need somebody to go with you. Hey, can you go with me? Because I'm scared of this, yep. you know. <laughs> and and so I, I had this friend and his name is Chris Gall. And he was a retired Marine. He actually helped develop leaders in the Marine Corps for like 25 or 30 years. And so I I, I, I thought I was going to do a podcast with him. That was another thing too. The, I was thinking that I was going to start a podcast with another person. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was going to do a podcast, but I was going to host it, but he was going to go with me. And then, so we ended up doing like nine, eight to nine, you'll never hear them podcasts. <laughs> and these were all of like the pre id the pre thing. So we would do a podcast. We're like, oh, that didn't sound good. So then we do another one. That didn't sound good. So we ended up putting out one at the very end of that. We ended up putting out one of his podcasts. It's the first. It's the second episode in Faith Horizons. It's Chris Gall. He has a leadership coaching thing. But but he did nine eight to nine like trial runs with me. Wow. You know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chris Gall, because yeah. he hadn't done that. And that's a great reminder of just how sometimes we don't always see like where what we're working on is going to go or where it's going to fit in. But there's always a purpose for everything that we're doing, even if we can't see the purpose at the time, it's always preparing us for something else. Yeah, that's so it's so true anyway. So thank thanks to Chris Gall for, you know, just going with me and helping me start that. And he and I are still friends and we're still great friends today. But um, after doing the first episode with me and we actually put that out. Uh, he just said, you know what, I think I'm going to, I'm going to step out. It wasn't, it wasn't like we didn't leave with bad blood or anything like that. It was just like, I was going to go off and do podcasting now. And he, and, 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 and he kind of helped get me on the way. He pushed me off. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank That's you, awesome. Chris. <laughs> That's great. What is just real quick, just some of the fruit that you've seen from having done the podcast. Now, how many years have you been working on it now? So I've been doing it for two years. So we okay. started it in, um, the first episode was in April of 2020. Okay. It was a COVID project. <laughs> it was a COVID project. <laughs> and then what's some of the fruit that you've seen the past couple of years? Yeah, it's interesting how many how many different ministries were started in, co- in, in 2020. I mean, so many things started out of 2020. So one of the things that I've noticed that I didn't realize, like, the kingdom of God in Kansas City is just so, and I'm going to use the word data rich. It's data rich. And what I mean by that is like all these ministries have all had to fight their own battles to get to where they're at. And they all understand different aspects of of sharing God's love or or by helping people. And so is it's helped me figure out, you know, that we're just we're just like we're just basically faith horizons is at the tip of the iceberg right now. Mm. You know, when it comes to understanding what's going on in the kingdom of God in Kansas City. Yeah. You know, like like I've interviewed maybe five, fifteen, maybe fifteen unique ministries, and then I have other uh, other podcasts which are called like Kingdom Briefs, which bring in the same people over and over again to speak about you know like a kingdom business aspect of Christianity or. Like I got a guy that that does like um, he's an evangelist, so he just talks about one evangelistic thing after another after another, mm-hmm. and so. But I have about fifteen unique ministries there, and I would say in Kansas City we probably have three thousand. Wow! I mean, that's so you how have your work big cut out for you for the next that's while. That's <laughs> how big it is. Yeah, that's how big it is. It really is that big. Yeah, and and we and we as human beings we don't realize. Because God's kingdom is so vast, we we always look out our door like, oh, it's all bad and everything. But remember in the Bible, when Elijah was complaining to God that there's nobody else, it's just me, you know, I'm going to go and die, you know. <laughs> and God's like, hold on, I've got 7,000 people that haven't sworn to anybody, you uh-huh. know, you don't even know about. Yeah. Basically, the King, the Faith Horizons podcast is about finding the people you don't even know about. You That's don't even cool. know about these people. I mean, the, the amount of work that has been done, the groundwork, I mean, like even like you mentioned uh, in the Bobby Joe Reed interview, you know, she has been there for 20 years. Her her ministry now is having neighborhood impact. You know, she's changing lives, 10,000 lives. If she's got a 73% success rate or 76, that's 7,600 lives. 
That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Or even like I'm going through Apostle Ray Mabian's story now, and he started in 1984 in Kansas City. And so that's almost 40 years ago now. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, your podcast has been around for two years, but it's just perspective of like the groundwork that has to be laid and what God is doing. Like God is in it for the long term, yeah. for a long term impact. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of long term, just wanted to kind of transition into more of your personal story. Um, you had mentioned in some other podcast interviews that you have your own story of recovering from trauma yeah. and what that's looked like for you. So I was just wondering if you could share some of your own journey and what sure. God's taught you through that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't have like a really bad story. Like, like I don't have like a really bad story. I mean, I had both my parents when I was growing up, you know, and we had and I had six kids and my parents are still married and I still have all my six brothers, my five brothers and sisters, you know, and I'm the oldest of six. So I don't have a very bad story, but so what happened with me was around, um, in 2017, I think it was 2017 to 19. I just realized that I had reached a, I had reached a ceiling on who I could be. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Like I, I had reached a ceiling. Like I kind of wrote out some notes right here. I, you know, that that all people, you know, we all have a natural ceiling on what we can accomplish with the with what we've been given. And um, once you reach that ceiling, you either live under it or you have to break through it. Wow. What kind of things made you realize that you had reached a ceiling? Well, I was really just bogged down. Like you ever felt bogged down before? Like you're really just bogged down, and and. There's sometimes like like with a computer, you can sometimes defrag a computer. You wanna, do you know what I mean by defragging? I'm not technical <laughs> at all. <laughs> That's the reason I'm just the writer. <laughs> okay, so basically, it's just getting rid of all the junk that's not needed in a computer in order for it to function. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? So defragging a computer is just getting rid of all the extra files that are not needed in order for the computer to function. But the computer is constantly picking up all these files, these internet files and stuff. And so by defragging it, you might get rid of you know four to five gigabytes worth of data. The computer doesn't need you know so so like there's a defragging that goes on in our in our lives when we're with the lord we're defragging we're mm-hmm. constantly like it's like a filter we're like filtering out our stuff and then we come out we're like okay i feel better now you know what i mean mm-hmm. so so that's one way of looking at it so but this but what i went through in 2017 wasn't a defragging i had reached a ceiling like i had reached the top of where i was at where i could go and so i actually consulted with a with a biblical counselor and he wasn't really a counselor per se but he kind of just led me through a process to you know kind of help me identify you know some of the lies that I was believing about myself i mean i was insecure um i still kind of insecure but but i mean i was insecure my insecurity was limiting me um i was becoming a victim Hmm. You know what I mean? Because once you become a victim, you no longer have control over anything. Okay, I think I know what you mean, but explain it for the person yeah. listening right now. So once you're once you're a victim, then you know once you're living out of a victim mentality, you're like this is being done to me that rather than I am in control of my own situation, like it's being done to me, so I'm a victim. So life was starting to be done to me. Does that make sense? Rather than me actually contributing and actually taking steps to make my own life better, you know? Mm-hmm. So and, a victim mentality would be more like life is what it is. I can't do anything to change it. I'm yeah. just uh, the product of my circumstances. Basically. Yeah. And really, once you reach that perspective, you are the enemy has you right where he wants you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> because you no longer are powerful, mm. you know, and that's what the enemy's desire is to do is to make us not powerful. And so... I had reached that stage where I was starting to become the victim and and I didn't like it, you know, cuz I have a natural spirit of joy. I have joy like I have like this like I can joy through anything most of the time, but but I couldn't then. And I was like what is going on? So I contacted the counselor and we kind of went through a process of just hearing from the Lord and discovering those lies that I mean I I believed like cuz these are lies and and they weren't really spoken by my parents. But no matter how you, you go through life, you go through circumstances in your life, and, and depending on the individual, you process things differently, and you might you might start to believe a lie, so these lies become your truth. So if you believe that, you know, I can't receive, like I couldn't receive from, I couldn't 
receive from the Lord. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know how to just be a kid. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and so like we have to be able to be a kid with God because like, hey, God, I need something. And we have to be able to say, I expect him to show up and help me because he's God and yeah. he loves me. So what would you say were some of the life-changing truths that you gained like on the other side of the counseling process? So just one more step. So what happened with the counseling process is we didn't just go through uh, a defragging system. What what I wanted to say was, you know, you can buy a Dell computer, a 2000 Dell or 2020 Dell computer. In five years, that computer will be out of date, right? Mm-hmm. So my computer was out of date. So the Lord didn't defrag me. He he put a new motherboard in my my being. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. He's like, you need a whole new operating system to where you're able to determine that God is good and God is good. And so it does, even though I see that bad thing, that doesn't mean that God is bad. That means God is good. That, that, so that's, that's now a lie. Right. Lie. Right. (laughs) You know, so it's your operating system is better. So on the other side of the counseling thing, what ended up happening was there was this like I had never done woodworking. I had thought I wasn't any good at woodworking. Well, through that, you know, I ended up getting a like a I got a table saw, I got a you know, I got a work I built a workbench, you know, I you know, I I I I started getting all these little things. I started building bird houses. I had wow. never done all that before. I had never done that, you know? So it was just something that in you that had never been allowed to come out before. Right, right. Uh-huh. And, and so then I was like, oh, I, I'm good at this. You know, I'm good at something. And then also out of that, like, so this creative spirit started to come alive in me, you mm. know? So this creative spirit started to come alive in me that I had never had, um, never encountered before. And um, and I've realized this, this is true. Most of people, like, the first thing the enemy tries to shut down in you is your creative spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Any person on the earth is created in the image of God, right? Yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> we believe that's wholly true. You know, they, they're on their mission to finding God, but <laughs> some of them are, but, you know. Yeah, but we all in, intrinsically carry that in us. The but image we were of God, created in the image of God, yeah. every human being, right? And so the first aspect that's displayed in the Bible is God as the creator. So the enemy wants to shut down creator. Because the minute he can shut down creator, you can't you, cre- you can't create future for yourself. Mm. You can't create. I mean, literally, the creativity of human beings has, has changed everything. You know, we we create roads, we create cities, we create. <laughs> I mean, this is how we do business. You know, this is the business of humans is creating. You know, mm-hmm. and so if he can shut, if the enemy can shut down creating something or creating things, then it it's. Um, then he stopped probably your greatest your greatest um, weapon. So along those lines, to the listener who's listening right now and saying, wow, I think I can relate. I feel bogged down. Yeah. I've lost my creative spirit. What would you want to say to them? I would just spend time with the Lord and just try to find out what lie am I believing that's not true. Mm-hmm. You know, God is good. God loves me. You know, can I receive from him? If I can't receive from him, well, that's a disaster. Um, and then, you know, d- that's what I would do. I would, I would probably look to the Lord and try to find your. your um, I try to find the lie. Hmm. Where are you being lied to? What's the lie? What What's not true? And if you're saying to yourself that I am not, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You know, God is the God of the impossible. So that's not a true. That's that's a lie. You know, you're part of the. So that would be my suggestion. That's cool. And then just to recap, so it seems like the lies, or the truths that you found were that God is good, that He wants to give good things to you, and that you are creative because you're made in God's image. Is yeah. there anything else that you'd add to that? Yeah, and then <laughs> okay, I, I would just say because we're on Team God, we can we can afford to take a greater risk than other people. Wow. Yeah. Because we're on Team God, we can actually kind of pursue things and expect to be able to be fine on the other side, whereas other people might, they they might get bogged down by fear, you know, whereas, you know, with us, it's like, I'm going to just try it. (laughs) 
Yeah. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's, yeah. Let's, because we're so what are some team God, God risks yeah, you've taken? Some, so Faith Horizons is a team God risk. Mm-hmm. Um, we're putting a lot of money into Faith Horizons every year. You know, we haven't really had a significant return on investment yet. Um, there's enough coming in, you know, to, to pay for the, for the bills that we do have, but it's a team God risk, you know, it's like, Hey, this is going to work out, you know, in the long, in the long run. And so another team God risk would be like, I had a, um, it's anytime God tells you to do something that would not naturally be your first choice. Mm -hmm. Like whenever God's telling you something like, Oh, I would never do that. Well, that's probably a team God risk. Yeah. So on the, on the trauma thing, I didn't have any major traumas. But my traumas were basically just lies. The enemy just wants to attach all these little lies to you, to where you can't move anymore, to where you're bogged down. Mm-hmm. And then you can't function. You you take on a victim mentality, and then you know you might stay in a victim mentality for 10 years. I mean, we have parts of our city that have operated within that mindset. And I mean, I'm not saying that all of them have, but there's many of them that have you know, been stuck in that in, in, on both sides of the, on both sides of the East and the West, Yeah, <laughs> you know, that have been stuck in that mindset for years and yeah. years. They're generational victims. Yeah. And really, I mean, every person apart from Jesus is a victim. It's like part of Jesus's mission is he's here to that, that's proclaim true. freedom for the captives and recovery of sight for the blind. And so if you are captive and you are blind, you can't do anything. And so I think there's this big that's truth true. of so Jesus's true. heart is to release us from victimhood because apart from Jesus, every single one of us is a captive. That's so true. That's a good, that's a good point. And then also some, another thing I wanted you to cover a little bit is just as you're going forward with Faith Horizons and kind of the vision that God's given you for it to run with, what would you say is your biggest message to the world that you want to convey through this podcast? Yeah. So my, my hope is to create a, a, a data resource that could be duplicated um, just a lot of like what you did with um, um, the spiritual roots of Kansas City. Remember, you created that. that. That's a duplicatable item citywide. You know, multiple cities could duplicate the same process that you used to to showcase what God did in in their city. So you're mm-hmm. telling the history of Kansas City. You know, I'm I'm speaking about what are the operating systems that God is using to impact cities. You know, like yeah. how is he inter- how is God so my goal is to create like a data resource to say this is how God is interacting with the housing district inside of Kansas City. This is how God is interacting with the homeless district inside of Kansas City. Mm-hmm. You know, this is how God is interacting with the government in Kansas City, you know? Yeah. And so because a lot of these people have like there's ministries that actually have been started to influence governments in our city, to influence the government. So I just kind of want to get all of those I want to get it categoried out. Yeah. <laughs> I want to create a library resource that could be used for Kansas City because who wouldn't want to get behind the missions of God? Right. Yeah. And so kind of like offer people the ability to partner whether financially or voluntarily or prayer with these ministries in Kansas City, but also if you're looking from another city to say, oh, wow, we probably have the same things in our city. Mm -hmm. And so what are our ministries that we should be partnering with? Yeah. And that's something I found really helpful as I've been listening to the podcast myself is realizing these big problems that feel hopeless, like high crime rates and poverty and um, recovery from being in prison and things that just seem insurmountable to hear specific people's stories today of how over a 20 year ministry, they would lower the crime rate in their neighborhood, or like help so many people coming out of prison and just different things like that. So it's given me a lot of hope for what can be done through like real life stories. Yeah, and and many times the the solutions that that are that are being uh, presented are practical. They're not always spiritual. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're very practical solutions. Like you know, like you're you're you know referencing one of them, but they're you know there's somebody's coming out of prison. Well, let's get them a uh, <laughs> let's get them a cell phone. Let's let's help them get a place to stay for a couple weeks. Let's yes. help them have an opportunity to get a job. Those are practical solutions that, you know, like it says in Isaiah 58, help the people, the the poor, the hurting, the hungry, you know, I should probably requote, I 
read that in the Bible. But but basically, I think it's the orphans and the widows. Please help the orphans and the widows first. This is what mm-hmm. I consider true sacrifice yes. or true offering. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so how do you see Faith Horizon serving its listeners? And what's your vision for how this podcast can bless the listener? My hope, my hope for this podcast is it would it would light up people's minds to understanding how how vast the kingdom of God is in, in any city. You know, we have people that are focusing on like I know there's one guy in, in Kansas City that's buying houses. He's buying houses. What do you do? I'm buying houses, and I'm and then I'm renting to people, and I'm and then I'm helping them become owners. Oh God, that's a brilliant idea. You're changing economies. You're changing that family's economy one at a time. And so my goal is just to light up people's eyes to how um, how in depth God has been about all the different aspects of our our world today. That's amazing. And, and and the government, you know, like our government, you know, in America, our government in our cities. They all have their own solutions. You, you can look down the list of the government solutions for the homeless, for the housing thing. Well, God also has his solutions too. Mm. And the government solutions aren't wrong. I'm not saying they're wrong, but there might be a little twist, a little better way of doing it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, because God gives us government, but he also gives us the church and yeah. businesses yeah. and education and yeah. families. Yeah, I'm not it's putting down what our government is doing. I think mm-hmm. that it's you know when you look at like city management, it's fascinating. And I've done a, I've done some research on city management. City management is fascinating. I mean, Kansas City has 2,600 miles of road. Someone's got to take care of that. <laughs> you wonder why they don't get your road plowed? Well, that's why. <laughs> 2,600 miles of road, and uh, we actually are bigger than New York. We actually, the Kansas City metro area is, no, the Kansas City, just Kansas City proper, Kansas City, Missouri proper is bigger than New York. As far as the land. As far as the land mass. Right. So, I mean, we're not small. We're not a small fry, but, but, but New York has millions and millions and millions of people, whereas Kansas City only has like 500,000 people. So we are actually, so you think about, you know, just trying to maintain an infrastructure. Well, how, what does that cost? Right. I mean, th- but this is all the fascinating stuff about cities. Yeah. You know? So then basically to, to bring it back, so then the heart of the podcast is just serving people by helping them see their city in a new light, see in depth everything that's going on and how God is usually using ministries and people to affect the city. Yeah. And then also give them the opportunity to partner with those, um, with those different ministries. You mm-hmm. know, they can partner with them financially. And I always ask, I'm trying to ask those questions, you know, how can we partner with you financially, voluntarily? What do you need? <laughs> yeah. So let's ask this. So for Faith Horizons, how can they partner with you financially and voluntarily? What do you need? <laughs> so um, the Faith Horizons business model has a, um, uh, we, we can do, you could do donations through Patreon if you want to that, you know, you can start, you know, sign up, you know, $25 a month, $50 a month. You can always do that. Our our prime our our long term goal is to to do advertising just like a like just like a newspaper would. Okay. So like I have a website. I've got like you know ten to fifteen different locations on there for advertising. So that way we can advertise for local businesses or other businesses. I mean, if this becomes worldwide, it becomes much bigger than. But it's to advertise and to bring in money to bring in money that way by promoting. Um, businesses that we curate <laughs> we would like them we like that business so we'll let them advertise and we're we're creating ads for them and and um, so that was one way to bring to bring finances in one of the biggest helps that you can do to to help faith horizons though is to share the podcast i mean by providing listeners we have more authority and influence you know if i get 20,000 downloads an episode if i get 30,000 downloads an episode well then i can easily sell this to an advertise person trying to advertise and we can make money it's mm-hmm. not a problem yeah <laughs> you know but i have to we have to grow the listenership so just the opportunity to grow li- listenership maybe even strategy on that any help with like a mal um, mal opt-in for stuff would be helpful for okay. faith horizons right now i mean those are that's like the nitty-gritty stuff but but we need we need a bigger email. We need a bigger you know um, just so that way we we can extend our reach and cool. 
Great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Just getting to hear your story. And um, it's fun to be on the other side of the mic doing the interviewing. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing <laughs> That's everything. Such a blessing. You've, been, you. you've been such a blessing, Annika. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, we'll get it uh, get it done. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Here's a quick update from Faith Horizons. I have recently added unique pages for each organization interviewed on the Faith Horizons podcast. These pages include all articles and posts for that specific organization and also include the opportunity to leave your testimony of experience with them. You can find these specific organization pages and the opportunity to leave testimonies on the front page. Please take the time to leave a testimony for whichever organizations have impacted you. It really helps tell the complete story of what God is doing in Kansas City. Thank you so much. 